are now in the great tribulation, everyone on the streets, but run to your homes, stay in until further instruction. Hey everybody, it's Anthony Young with Anthony Young Religious Investigations, and I had been gone for a while, but um, I'm back and just wanted to talk to you on the end of time um, and this coming uh, doomsday scenario that everybody's predicting. You know, um, um, I got a I got a few topics that I wanted to talk about. Um, there was different things that struck my attention and made me pay attention a little more to the scriptures that we have. Um, and I'm going to go through a list of them and talk about each one of them and my personal views on each of them. And hopefully with the editing and everything that I'll do post-production, I'll be able to put a little couple of bells and whistles and things of that nature throughout the video. But, um, the first topic is the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, um, Pope Francis to be exact. He was born December 17th in 1936. Um, there's a prophecy by St. Malachi, uh, who was actually ordained a saint by the Catholic Church, um, that states that this Pope was given a vision, and this was over some odd a century ago, and um, actually could be quite a few centuries, if not mistaken, and it was to, it was to, uh, to tell the next 112 Popes, and the, the last Pope that will usher in the Great Tribulation that is spoke about in the Book of Revelation in the Bible. And they say that this, this, this actual saint that actually had this vision and listed these 112 was right on all of them by what name they took and the name that they would take as Pope, because it's always a different name, Peter or something or this or that. And this Pope, this prophecy was actually correct. And it says that this Pope, which would be the 112th, is Pope Francis, um, because it says that the 111th Pope, it says that this Pope will only stay for a short time. And, you know, popes usually die in office. Well, this last pope that we had prior to Pope Francis decided he was going to resign because he didn't, his health wouldn't allow him to continue to be the pope for the Catholic Church. And that rings true with the prophecy because the prophecy says that this pope will only stay for a short period of time. And then the, fi the final pope, which is the 112th that will come in, will usher his sheep through a, gr through a great tribulation. And the terrible judge will judge his people, meaning Jesus will come back and judge his people. And that the city on seven hills, which everybody indicates and knows that it's to be Rome, which is the Roman Catholic Church, which is spoken about heavily in Revelation, um, is supposed to be destroyed. And Pope Francis has been saying some really, uh, some really strange things, some bizarre things. And the more I'm sitting here looking at this gentleman, the more I'm getting a very uneasy feeling, you know, um, uh, it's just some of the comments he makes, like uh, the atheist, calling the atheist to the church, and then this grand push that the Catholic Church is having to try to get all the different religions to unite under one, saying basically that we worship all worship the same God. And I'm sorry, we don't all worship the same God. And I think that's where the big discrepancy between the two are. I think that's exactly the issue that Protestants had, along with, you know, working for your salvation Protestants really believe that Jesus is the only way you can have salvation because there's no amount of good works you can do on earth is going to grant you admission into heaven if it's not through forgiveness. So that along with this uh, religious fornication of all these different sects, you got you got um, you got all of these different religions. You got Buddh Buddhists. You got um, all these different sects and uh, Indian um, praying to their God and Shiva and this and that and we're all praying to the same God. Well, my God is not like those. So I think that's a big issue. Um, but some of the things he's been saying has been leading me to, you know, raise an eyebrow and kind of wonder if if it's really like it, there seems to be something else going on beneath the surface, at least in my opinion. So I think that that's a big thing. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about was Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem has been getting a lot of attention, being it always has because of the land, and there's so many people trying to possess that land. And I think that this, the whole everybody's eyes on Jerusalem is going to play a major part in it, because um, as we know that they was trying to sign a seven year peace deal, which is specifically spoken about in Revelations. That seven year peace deal, that this beast was supposed to act out, and in three and a half years into this peace agreement, all hell is going to break loose. Basically, that's what's going to happen, and. 
Jerusalem seems to be like now they're supposed to be. Iran had that six months to enrich uranium, and as long as they kept true to their uh, promise, the sanctions would be lifted. And the six month period is over next. And it, actually, since it's April first now, it's April first. So this this piece, I mean, around this time, this p the six month peace deal that we worked out six months ago should be, you know, they should be getting ready to decide on that peace deal. And as long as Iran kept their word. And nothing has happened as of yet, but very, very soon I feel like something's going to pop and everything's going to, like, cut loose. So, that's one of those very major issues. Then, um, there was another thing I wanted to speak about, which was the seven-year peace deal that uh, Barack Obama went over to Israel and spoke about. And I always remember the saying of, uh, be cautious of anyone that comes promising change. And then you have the seven-year peace deal, which is a major marker. Anybody who's actually watched the Left Behind movies or, you know, Left Behind Tribulation Force, and there's like a series of them, um, it speaks in specifically about a seven-year covenant with Israel, where Israel is going to give up some of its land. And the land of uh, Jerusalem shall not be divided, or the Lord God will go against whatever country tries to divide it. Well... They're speaking of giving the Roman Catholic Church a space. They've even built, they're building a bench to be placed over David's tomb. And I think that in the Bible of Revelations, I think it speaks of a seat of abominations where the, the church of the devil, basically, that's run by the wickedness of the you know, heavenly bodies, is going to try to place itself right on top of the lineage of Jesus. Like they try to pollute the, the, the DNA line of humans with those Nephilim characters so that the Savior couldn't be born. Well, this time in the great in the in the rise of the Antichrist, he's going to try to basically step in and take all that belongs to Jesus. And so he's going to set up his seat at David's tomb in the place of of what God's sacred spot's supposed to be. And I think that that's going to be the seat of abominations, which is going to lead to a whole bunch of other things. And I believe that they're going to happen in such rapid succession that people are going to have time to, to really grasp the magnitude of what's going on. It's just going to be one event after another, and people are going to like, it's just going to be overload. It's going to be sensory overload, basically. And that seven-year peace deal um, should be, there should be a lot more talk about it, and we should start seeing some, some um, things on, online, some flyers, some banners about this tremendous, tremendous thing, and it's going to be peace, and it's going to promise peace, and then sudden destruction is going to come. Um, so I'm looking at into that. And I've been online, and a lot of people have been talking about this great alien deception that uh, everyone's thinking of. And I know the Roman Catholic Church has been monitoring the heavens for quite some time. And a lot of things that the, the things that the Bible say about with spiritual wickedness in, in heavenly places is true. But what makes me wonder is that these objects or these things that people are seeing, because I did some research on it, and <clears throat> a lot of these things are materializing and dematerializing all in the same breath. So you really can't be, you can't be in physical, in physical nature and the laws of physics and nature and matter and then turn it to something that can pass through something. So you either you it ha you have to be interdimensional. You have to be able to materialize and dematerialize. And the only creatures I know that have ever been created by what the Bible says that can materialize and dematerialize at will and change their shape so rapidly are angels, either angels or demons. And I'm pretty sure that angels ain't gonna come down ain't gonna come down here and do what I think is gonna happen. So everybody's watching. <clears throat> And I think NASA and a couple of other scientists and people and the Pope has been doing research saying that um, there should be an announcement very, very soon that's going to really shake the foundation of what people believe. And I think that this is a ploy to get all the world, not just America, but all the other countries to unite under a common threat. And when everybody unites under this common threat, it'll be more easier and more easier to get the whole world under one accord. So that'll be a lot easier for this this Antichrist character who's going to show up to walk in and see himself at the top of the of the pyramid, and everybody works beneath him, you know. Um, but I think that it's 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 the deception that is spoken about in Revelations is going to be 
It says the deception is going to be so good that it would even fool God's chosen ones if it were possible. So by that passage, I think it's saying that it's not really possible, but it will be so convincing as to even convince them if they did not have the forward thought and the word of God to let them know that this is indeed a deception. So whatever the deception is, it's going to be huge. And it's going to be very, very convincing enough to lead so many away. Um, then I wanted to talk about the false prophets and the churches. Um, and I just, I, I just say that anyone who claims to know the workings of God and declares it to the people, the public, are considered prophets, whether they're good or bad, you know. Um, like in my, I, my situation, I'm like, uh, people that would be considered prophets, whether false or true, would be anybody who tries to speak for God and tries to lead others to God by the ways of their teachings. And you should know a person by the, by the fruit that they carry. You should know them by what they speak. And Oprah is one of those ones who spoke that you can get to heaven without Jesus. And she doesn't see the importance of Jesus. And she's trying to convince all of her, her viewers and stuff. And I've I seen a, um, some footage on YouTube. You can look it up where her, one of her fans like completely told her, no, uh, no, honey, I'm sorry, but you can't get to heaven without Jesus. And it caused a big uproar. And so Oprah's always had this kick. I think that she has bought into the God of this world, which is money and the things of the world. So she knows exactly what she's doing. She's not foolish. And Joel Olstein, who says you don't have to have Jesus to get to heaven, the smiling preacher who never uses scripture, never uses any scripture. He just tells motivational stories that are probably not true. They're probably not true. Stories really just have nothing to do with anything. They're just, <laughs> they're just basic there's like clouds there. You can see it. You, I mean, it's just nothing there. There's no substance. You can put your hand right through it. It's like, and it's kind of scary though. And he's got such a huge following. So it reminds me of the saying that Jesus said. It says that when the world persecutes you, remember that they did it to me first. And if you were of the world, then the world would love its own. It would love you if you were of the world. But if you're not of the world, the world's, I mean, if you're not of the world, the world's going to reject you. And he has the accolades and the attention and the love of the entire world because he is of the world. So nothing that he's saying is really going up. You know, he's doing it for worldly purposes. He's not doing it to bring anybody's soul closer to God, knowing that we're in the end times. He's probably working on the other side. And there's something to that. I believe that there's something sinister going on there because of the, the, the smiles and the the blank expression, he's trying to dumb down the people so that time will pass and they will get caught unready. That's what I think. And I know that there's a lot of other ones like that guy, whatever his name is. It's some ridiculously absurd name. Uh, he's on the History Channel, uh, Ancient Aliens, where everybody, oh, Jesus was an alien and this was an alien and that was an alien. This is all part of conditioning the human minds to accept this alien deception crap when it comes. That's why that whole show is talking about how everybody who had any biblical importance in the Bible was an alien. So that when this great deception does come down and he says, look, we are the aliens that created you and the Bible that you have been reading, you have gotten it wrong. We created you and your leader will be coming soon. And then when he shows up, everybody's going to bow and say, he made us and he's going to do these spectacular, wondrous things in the skies in front of all these people. And where they're going to believe it, hook, line, and sinker. But the religious ones know to expect it are not going to. And then that's when, you know, things are going to be at its thickest, you know. And that's just another thing that I, I noticed upon. And um, everybody's having, in the religious community, in the church circle, and those who are doing their work of saving, lives, of saving souls, it's a little bit of a debate going on whether the rapture of God, Jesus coming and taking his chosen to heaven, snatching them off the earth and snatching them out of the graves right before the end times so that um, they can be with him at the right at that moment when he comes back and just redeems the earth. People are wondering if it's going to happen before the Antichrist presents himself or is it going to happen um, after or after he's already been made known and everybody's already going through terrible suffering. And they're fighting back and forth over that. And I kind of don't think there's a point to that because right now we're at such a close wire to the end that everybody needs to be focused on saving the next person. Trivial little things over that. God will protect his own. I believe that. God will protect his own. So this back and forth between the two about 
you know, pre-trib, post-trib is a distraction. Get back to the message. That's where the attention needs to be. God will come when he's supposed to. He'll come when he's ready. He'll come only when he's ready, and that's his choice to make. Um, the Antichrist. This guy's supposed to... Everybody's online. Everybody says that every president was the Antichrist, and they have not stopped just because they, Barack Obama is in office. They think he is the Antichrist. Now, mind you, all of these leaders have very Antichrist traits because... I think you're governing the you're governing a government of the world. So there's gonna be some influence upon you by the God of this world, you know? He's gonna have whether unknowingly or knowingly, you it's gonna you're gonna be plugged into that frequency, so to speak. So you have to watch your leaders very carefully because with that notoriety and power tends to corrupt some people. So, you know, human beings have a shelf life as long as as to success because then it gets to a point where this the carnal nature of man is never satisfied so it would always have to be more and at what cost would a person do or say to stay on top so i don't think that barack obama's the antichrist i honestly don't although he's done some very antichrist things and said some really scathing things when it came to religion but honestly i don't think it's him because his the numbers and the timeline would not work out really Unless there was some major change that would allow him to stay in a seat of power after this second term, he would have to still be in power and in power enough and liked enough where he could actually finagle this whole situation to becoming ruler in a way that would catapult him to the big, big level that the Antichrist has to be. He has to be kind of a larger than life kind of everybody awes and follows this person. And Barack Obama right now ain't really like, people don't like him too much right now. So I don't think that is him. But I do think that the chips and the tables have been set for whoever is going to show up on the scene next. There's going to be some, like Barack Obama, when he first ran for office in his first term, he came out of nowhere. And everybody like, who the hell is this guy? And no one knew who he was. And he came in and just like, just like swept over everything. The Antichrist is going to be the same way. He's going to come in and he's going to have a magnetism that is going to draw everybody around him into it because he's going to have to in order to gain the popularity to the success and the power that he needs to enact this final plan. He's going to have to have a lot of charisma. He's going to have to be electric, you know, and honestly, unless something really tremendous happens. Um, I don't see Barack Obama excelling to that level unless there's an, you know, unless something really bad happens and he comes out of it like super, like larger than life, you know, something miraculous almost would have to happen in order to rekindle everybody's, uh, intrigue of, of Barack Obama. And unless something like that happens, I don't see. So it could be very well. The Antichrist could be someone who's just gonna, I think it's a person that's walking around now. They don't have the spirit of the Antichrist in them at all. They're themselves. But the spirit of the Antichrist will overtake this person the same way the Holy Spirit took came upon Jesus when he was baptized. I think it's going to be a spirit falling into a person and then that person be, being taken over by that energy. And I think that's how it's going to happen. But I don't know. I don't see any sign of it. I mean, you see you know, false prophets and people on the online saying that, this man in uh, Mexico or New Mexico or one of those places saying that he's the Antichrist and getting these idiot followers of his to tattoo 666 on them. I mean, you're always going to have cults and you're always going to have crackpots and you're always going to have people who are looking for something but willing to believe anything, even if it defies reasonable knowledge and truth. Um, but that's just the way it's always been. It's going to be that way. You know what I mean? I mean, what can you do but pray for him? Um, then you have... Um, there's a lot of talk about the demon, the demons that are roaming around in the government. And I actually watched a video where one of the pope, where one of the preachers or ministers, or, uh, the Catholic Church spoke about how there was the devil and the devil was in a church, and that these gentlemen who were doing exorcisms, these preachers who were doing exorcisms and pastors had to be exorcised themselves. So I do believe that when Pope Francis was, car when he was, you know, given the title of pope. And the Vatican was struck by lightning. I honestly believe that that was the spirit of the false prophet falling into the church. Because I think that God gives signs through the heavens. You know, like this year we're going to have four blood moons. And every time four blood moons has happened, it's only happened, what, 500 years ago? 
it, it was a major uh, thing that happened, you know, I mean, with the Jewish with the Jewish country. And I think that that works on God's timetable because everything is centered around his homeland. You know, and so um, I think that I mean, I think that honestly, all the governments have have this spirit, this 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 spirit walking around them and helping them and influencing them to make decisions because the ways of the world are opposite of the ways of God. And we see how corrupt governments get and what kind of fighting they do back and forth and attacking this person for this reason, but it really was caused by them so that they could have a reason to attack to obtain this from that. It's it's all it's all you know smoke and mirrors and anything that causes confusion like that is the work of the devil the devil causes confusion it is at least i believe it and i always will and um the second coming i mean that's probably going to be that's the best part of this whole thing is that that second coming when jesus comes back all of this will be no more i mean he's going to put a stop to it so out of all of this a lot of people get you know worried about the end time i don't see it as a bad thing because i think that people when it when it does happen it's going to be such a conclusion and such a sense of fulfillment that it's going to if if you know where you're going you'll be happy you'll be you'll be fine if you know where you're going you'll be fine you know and it's up to everybody to you know to make sure that they have a place where they're going you know to to to, to pray and to, you know, try to settle up things. That way, no matter what happens, it won't bother you either way because your soul is covered, you know? And just kind of watch for them. And so nobody knows, like, the day or hour of any moment, you know? But you could just watch for those these signs and just kind of be aware because when it does, when calamity does happen, you've already got your footing, you know? You already got your, you got your groundwork. You know what you know. So when it all happens, you'll be, it's like an aura of protection around you because all you do is just be waiting for the moment when you can go home and everything will be made well again. But this is Anthony Young for Anthony Young Religious Investigation. I encourage you to check me out on YouTube. Um, and I'll put those links and everything in the bottom down here. And you can see the other videos and things that other projects that I'm working on. My name is Anthony Young. Um, you can email me at anthonylyoung at hotmail.com. Um, and I had fun talking to you again and I'll try to put a little couple bells and whistles in the video and everything, but I will talk to you again real soon. Thank you.